Hi, I'm Ian Whitaker, City Analyst and host of JC Deco Digital Changemakers Podcast. The podcast that showcases industry research and insights to inspire senior marketeers to push the boundaries on their marketing strategies and become change agents in their organizations. On this podcast, we're talking about the latest challenges faced by advertisers. It feels like we've been in a constant state of flux over the past few years. And one senior marketeer I spoke to recently asked if we could ever catch a break. We've gone from a pandemic to Brexit, supply chain issues, and a cost of living crisis. Now we're hearing about redundancies amongst some of the biggest digital industry stalwarts, such as Google, Meta, and Spotify. And even more worries about brand safety issues and confusion on where to go with marketing strategy in the context of Elon Musk's Twitter. So, will we ever catch a break? There is no one more qualified to speak to this topic than today's guest, Kelly Parker, CEO of Wavemaker. We'll be discussing Kelly's observations on how marketeers' behaviours have changed over the last few years and who is standing out for the right reasons when it comes to growing their brands. We'll discuss how you, as a listener, can use these challenges to your advantage to act boldly and step up your marketing strategies. Wavemaker's own mission sums this up. Exponential growth requires uncomfortable change. Change demands courage from clients and people. We are going to explore how this can relate to your brand today. Kelly. Hi. Hi. Great to have you here. <laughs> Thanks Thank very much. Thanks for having me. No, not at all. No, absolute pleasure. Sort of, I know things are busy at the moment. Very, yes. Yeah, indeed. It seems to be the same across agency world. Yeah. And, uh, no, go so on. I was going to say, I don't think it's ever not busy now. Although yeah. th this quarter has definitely started faster than I've ever felt it before. Well, it seems like it. Oh, that, that's the feedback. And I yeah. think actually that's it's probably a good segue into the first sort of question I was going to ask, which is really at the moment, sort of how is advertising? How does it look yeah. sort of, of you know, the agency world as well? I mean, what are your thoughts sitting from the inside? Yeah, well, I mean, it's... From a media perspective, it's super busy. Mm. And I mean, look, look at the headlines over the last couple of weeks. Even from a creative point of view, there's a lot of pitching. Yeah. Um, I think coming out of uh, what is, I mean, I, I can't even call it just COVID now, yeah. right? It's been a perma crisis. Wasn't that the word, yeah, of, word that's of the true. year? Yeah. Word of the year last year for 2022. So coming out of a perma crisis or still in a perma crisis. I think um, lots of change, lots mm. of lots of clients sort of thinking that they need to maybe think differently. Mm -hmm. Agencies either deciding not to repitch, which I think is a bit of a trend okay. at the moment, which is quite interesting. We did that a couple of times mm -hmm. last year, um, and also then just pitching and looking looking differently. I think yeah. change clients seem to think is what gets you difference, mm -hmm. um, and so. You know, I think there's a, a little bit of let's look around rather than maybe let's challenge the agency we've got. I don't, I don't, okay, I don't know, but um, yeah, I think uh, it's busy and lots of change, lots of big questions. I think when things like supply chains are difficult, mm -hmm. you know, challenge for you know cost saving is difficult. I think we're all we're all trying to kind of solve many questions at mm -hmm. the moment on behalf of. On behalf of clients. Yeah. One of the thoughts that, that sort of um, with the pandemic is it seems to have made the agencies more trusted partners for the brands. Yeah. And my feeling on, on this is that if I remember back pre-COVID, there's a lot of talk about distance mediation that effectively, you know, pressing the worth of the agency. Yep. Suddenly you get this big event that comes through. Agencies reacted very quickly. Clients may be realizing that that was the sort of stuff that, quite frankly, they couldn't couldn't do. Yeah. Have you noticed any sort of uh, changes in the relationship or how brands are viewing agencies more trusted partners? Or yeah, yeah, for sure. I think um, that when you've been in the trenches, for want of a better mm -hmm. phrase, with clients through unprecedented times, yeah. I think we can still say that they were unprecedented times. You definitely forge a tighter relationship and trust. Mm -hmm. um, you you make things happen that maybe you wouldn't be making happen day in, day out in, mm -hmm. a, in a kind of standard year. I think, you know, you can only ride that 
for so long. And mm-hmm. I think I think re- the relationship and sort of, I suppose, partnership and relationship became almost the definition of your your client relationship, if that makes makes sense. So the okay. people, the way you responded, yeah. you know, your ability to turn things around quickly, to answer, a, you know, 45 different scenarios mm-hmm. for them, almost defined whether you were doing a good or a bad yeah. job through that period. Okay. I think there's definitely, as we're, as we're stepping out, I mean, we're not out of a crisis, right? Whether it's yeah. costly, uh-huh. but it are definitely out of the pandemic mm-hmm. driver yeah. mm-hmm. of, um, of it being so volatile that I think now the focus is back on the, on the work, which mm-hmm. excites me because that's what I absolutely think the agency's there to do, right? Yeah. You're there to deliver the work in, in the world that consumers interact with, Brands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I know you talked about this whole idea, big, public, and, and trusted uh, yep. as well. So could you elaborate on your thoughts on that, particularly when it refers to omnichannel marketing yep. and some of the key sort of takeaways that, that people should take from that? Yeah. So I think, look, we, you know, not to go on, but we've bumped out of, a, out of the pandemic. We've gone mm. straight into a war in the East. Mm-hmm which has impacted our clients' production lines, so into a supply chain crisis, Mm -hmm. a people crisis, Mm -hmm. um, and then straight into inflation and cost of living. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, you know, in a number of instances, Mm -hmm. clients have retreated back in, I'm not a fan of branded performance, but they have retreated back into more Mm short-term response from an advertising perspective you know that's proven let's keep doing that Mm -hmm. proven short-term thing and um and i think my my comments around big and public is brands consumers don't they're not under the radar right brands consumers use brands to navigate categories Mm -hmm. um and generally if you're not public Mm -hmm. consumers don't really know about you so i sort of have this quite strong belief that Brands shouldn't hide under algorithm, uh, hide away in algorithms, and only surface when someone's asked for them. Mm-hmm. They should say something, and they should be out trusted mm-hmm. and in public spaces. And I think, you know, there is a crisis of trust in in politics, in brands. Mm-hmm. You know, all the challenges, the number of the big tech platforms. I think making sure you're in big trusted media mm-hmm. alongside all the stuff that sweats. Yeah. You know, sweats and optimizes ROI for you. Mm-hmm. I think that's incredibly important if you want to keep existing and growing over time. Yeah, uh, and look, it makes sense. I mean, we've talked on uh, on this podcast series a number of times about the whole idea of intangible capex in terms of brand advertising. Yeah, you build it up over time. The resource as well. There's a compound effect as well. Quite frankly, you know, it's not as though you could just take it, slot it out, and then everything else is fine. Yeah. It's sort of it ripples down all, all the way through. Yep. I guess for me, having com- covered companies for a number of years, you could definitely see that managements are very much influenced by the short-term focus. For sure. And that ripples down in terms of the, the marketing side. And one yep. of the, the issues I think they have is, they say, well, how do you value brand advertising? You, yep. How is it that we can see the perception yeah, that it is adding value to the firm, it's adding value to our products, so how would you how would you counter that argument to say, well, we as management teams find it very hard to actually look at the value of what our brand is? Yeah. I mean, I suppose, I mean, I can only speak about it from our perspective. You know, it need it needs to be measured. I mean, mm-hmm. the thing that always the thing the reason I get really passionate about not liking the language of brand and performance mm-hmm. is it assumes that immediately brand doesn't perform. Yeah. Um, and and especially when you start to carve media up into chan- like this channel is a performance channel, this this channel is a brand channel, mm. and you're a bit like, well, okay, does that mean that that doesn't perform? And you know, when you're when you start to measure, which most clients, you know, we, you know, we would say you should absolutely be looking for the, a way to measure both mm-hmm. sides of your business, whether it be short term, medium, long term, for something to wor- work in the long term, it, it generally has to work in the short term first, right? Yeah. So if you're measuring it correctly, mm-hmm. you will be able to judge the value of brand, mm-hmm. sometimes trying to carve up where that brand effect is in a model or in a, mm-hmm. you know, a measurement framework is the tough bit. Yeah. You know, is it coming through in an uplifting search as opposed to in your tele ad or, you know, whatever yeah. it is. But it, generally, you can see an impact mm-hmm. 
of doing stuff that isn't short term, mm -hmm. for want of a better phrase. And so I think getting your measurement right and knowing what you want it to do, mm -hmm. but also, you know, everyone keeps on rushing to, it's all about data, it's all about data. You'll, you'll see it. Consumers will talk about the mm -hmm. brand. Shops will want to stock your brand more. Like it, it plays out. You've just got to hold your nerve, I think. Yeah. And, and I think this, you know, the average tenure of a CMO now is what, two years? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is the CMO close enough to the CFO? Is the CEO yeah. a marketeer or not a marketeer? Like all of those things play mm -hmm. into how people are responding. I think the, where we see the best work, the biggest growth is where a client is able to take a breath and think what what should we be doing not what am i being asked to do day in day out yeah what does a what does our brand need where's growth going to come from you know we at wavemaker we talk a lot about positive provocation mm -hmm. and that that isn't just about kind of being challenging i think any mm -hmm. agency should always challenge a brief or mm -hmm. have that challenging mindset this is about like growth is really un like finding growth is really hard yeah you know lots of marketers spend their time managing decline rather than mm -hmm. looking for growth or mm -hmm. someone has exponential growth but doesn't really know where growth is coming from like understanding yeah. how to grow is incredibly hard so you know sometimes you have to look beyond the obvious and positively provoke mm -hmm. as we say to try and find solutions for growth that maybe aren't smacking you in the face and that that's you need to be brave and you need to mm -hmm. be able to pause you need to be able to, able to take the argument to the people with the pounds and do well and, and we see that a lot with our clients like this this concept of helping them create the story that can go back into the boardroom is yeah. you know i mean it's not something new but it's um it's certainly becoming more prevalent again there is a lot of talk about essentially metrics data yeah and almost as though what gets missed is essentially if you want to call it the human element yeah. and the other side of things i mean i'd like to hear your thoughts on that actually because maybe i'm completely wrong mm -hmm. or or maybe sort of oh that's a valid point what do you think it'd be a, it'd be a rubbish question if i went you're wrong wouldn't yeah it? well no but you can <laughs> absolutely you know um so look i think there's something in that for sure we often debate this point um back at, at sea containers i think people have become really data obsessed mm -hmm. clients have become data obsessed and uh, look there's there's a lot to be said for having data mm -hmm. i think it's incredibly important uh, particularly to go back to, you know, if you want to prove a point in a in a boardroom. Mm -hmm. I think where it gets misused is where it becomes about ones and zeros mm -hmm. and we forget that behind it is hu human behaviours and that people have done something for a reason mm -hmm. to get us to the number that we are now looking at mm -hmm. or the response rate that we are now looking at. And so the why is of often... The who and the why and mm -hmm. all of that stuff can often be missed. And I think um, and I think that leads to quite binary decision making at mm -hmm. times. And so, you know, I would always encourage people to be much more about what's the insight, what's the human insight behind it, what mm -hmm. you know, why are people doing what they are doing to mm -hmm. elicit that good or bad result. Mm -hmm. Um so I think it is, it's about humans and 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 the challenge in comes when it leads to just, you know. I don't know, let's go to one of the worst case scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, TV does X, therefore we must do Y. Search mm -hmm. does this, therefore we'll spend this in it. As opposed to what are we trying to do? What's the, what's the, the problem we are trying to solve mm -hmm. to drive the growth we need to grow? And therefore, rather than thinking in channels, we should start to think in, you know, the, the, the behaviours we're trying to elicit amongst consumers, the, mm -hmm the thing we're trying to put into their mind, the message. And, mm -hmm. you know, we often, we, you know, starting to talk to clients about thinking in encounters, the encounter, the mm -hmm. experience that you want consumer, your consumer to be having, mm -hmm. as opposed to what are we putting on that poster or in, in that tele ad, or, you know, we've got video on a plan in three different places mm -hmm. and, and it's doing three different things. Well, you know, what's what's that laddering up to as mm -hmm. in the minds of a consumer? I think that becomes really important. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to start thinking more in kind of humans and strategies to change behavior as opposed to 
num- ones and zeros yeah. to elicit a response. No, and I, I'd agree with that because it almost seems as though the end goal has been missed. Yeah. With a lot of this. Yeah. You know, it's about, okay, it's great you have all this data, it's great you have all this quantification, but what exactly are you trying to, what's your end purpose yeah. on this? And then work backwards from there. Yeah. Well, it's quite interesting if you look at the, the latest set of results, particularly from, yeah, if you say the consumer goods sector. Yeah. One of the noticeable things over the past six to nine months is the level of price increases they've been able to push through to consumers. Yep. Far greater than they would have expected and yep. far less impact on volume. And when you look at sort of you look through their comments and what they say, often they will refer to the strength of the brand. Yeah, in in terms of this. Now, you know, performance marketing doesn't get mentioned, but that doesn't mean it's not important as well, sort of within here. But it does feel as though sort of more brands are starting to realize, and maybe it is by accident, of having to push through price increases to to consumers. The hold on a minute, you know, the fact that we've actually done much better than this than we expected, our yeah. models projected, may actually say something about the strength of the brand. I think it, I think it does. I mean, it's there's a lot of well-proven theory around price elasticity, right? So, yeah. you know, the brand definitely plays a role. I mean, I think if, price rises continue whilst inflation is being predicted to go back the other way. I'm not sure consumers will swallow it quite as much as Mm -hmm. maybe they could swallow it when every other headline was inflation creeping up, up, up. I think there's an element of consumer sort of expectation Mm -hmm. that's maybe just accepting those price rises at that point. I think that, I think if you look closer at some of the numbers, top line growth isn't quite as good as bottom line growth on a lot of those mm-hmm. CPG That's clients. interesting, and okay. so uh, I don't, yeah, I think there's still a, there's there's definitely still a volume hit for a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, if you start to look at how own labels are mm-hmm. creeping, backup discounters are still doing extremely well in, yeah. you know, the retail space. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the brands will take them through, mm-hmm. particularly if they don't, market and give reason and so yeah. so then the flip of that is you can't re- keep just relying on I suppose the credit you have in the bank on your brand yeah. you have to you know I think we we talked about it when we last spoke in around sort of brands as living organisms you need yeah. to keep nurturing brands yeah. right you need to keep watering them and growing them mm. and evolving them and um, giving them purpose in people's lives and um, I think if if brands do that, then mm-hmm. they might get their price rises through a bit yeah, more yeah, yeah. because there's rationale for why I'm identifying with that brand versus another. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, you know, keep investing in brands rather than just think you've got a strong brand, I yeah. think is incredibly important. And and marketers are in danger of it being a kind of one or the other decision. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk a lot um, in the teams at Wavemaker about you know, the or versus and mm-hmm. theory okay. and a lot, you know, and it's, and look, you can see why, like yeah. lots of clients have finite, but you have a finite budget yep. and so you're carving the budget up. So it mm-hmm. is an or it's, should we do this or should we do yeah. that? The problem is we're often therefore sacrificing something to do something in the short term. So I think, I definitely think there has been a, a real kind of sacrifice on medium to long term brand growth yeah. in favor of short-term return. But maybe that's just a, a period of time. Yeah, We just need to be careful not to get hooked on the drug. Yeah. And ironically, I mean, you could say that performance marketing actually has been one of the the best uh, brand rebrands. Yeah. It used to be called direct yeah, 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 response. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, and nobody thought it was that great then. No. And, and now, now it, it, it's been rebranded. Yeah. The other thing that I think is interesting yeah. is, you know, it's supply and demand, isn't it? In the sense of actually a lot of the reason marketeers were going into um, performance channels was because, you know, things like TV inflation Mm -hmm. in their eyes was pricing them out or meaning that they should pull more money out. So they're moving money into, you know, social channels or into um, search and and, um, display and sort of cheaper CPM or easier to see the return Mm -hmm. channels. And actually, I think as more and more of them have flooded the algorithm, Mm -hmm. actually the cost of getting that response is they're now seeing that creep up. Yeah. So interestingly, everyone's sort of back on slightly more of a 
equal playing field okay. obviously different by category and yeah, product yeah, yeah. and all of those things and size of market but um there's definitely more inflation back in the performance space than okay. maybe we had seen previously okay that is that is quite interesting because you're right actually tv inflation was the thing that was yep. talked about six nine months yep. ago it seems to have sort of uh, slackened off in terms of that i guess you know if yeah, this conversation with boards and going back to this point, the message that essentially sort of of marketeers. Yeah. When you hear marketeers talking to sort of uh, when they talk to you, what do they say is the biggest barrier in their sort of in their experience of getting their message across to the boards? I think, um, look, it's the, the flip when you see it works so to take it in a different angle yeah. is when. Uh, marketing and media, anything you're spending around the marketing space is seen as an investment rather than a cost. Mm -hmm. But on a P&L, it's a great big number. Yeah. You know, even even when it's a smaller number in the world that we live in, it's still for that business, a huge chunk mm -hmm. on a P&L. Um, and I think it's a mindset flip and a... Mm -hmm. and a, a, a set of use cases that are required for it mm -hmm. to be seen as an investment. Yeah. Okay. And um, and it's hard, particularly, you know, it's less hard in more established businesses, mm -hmm. I think, because there is more evidence, mm -hmm. but often quite difficult in something that's trying to scale. Um, you know, we see it in an, an, in Wavemaker Select, which is our scale-up scale business, mm -hmm. that, you know, it's much harder when you're dealing in do I do I fix the website or do I go and put some money behind trying to get listed in Sainsbury's or yeah. you know those sorts of things are really difficult decisions when mm -hmm. you have a small finite pot of yeah. cash and you're a founder and all of those things. So finding the use cases, finding the proof cases, then to a CFO mm -hmm. or an owner is is much harder. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a flip from cost to investment. Yeah. And again, on this series, we talked a lot about speaking the language of the CFO yeah. and getting the message across to the board. I think that sort of reinforces that message. Yeah. I'm going to let you finish <laughs> with, with, with what would be the key takeaway that you would give to people in terms of when it comes to advertising? So at the moment, I would say, like, we've done a lot of rushing around mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm still rushing around, but... Um, I would tell people to catch a breath. It's been a really tough, what, two and a bit years mm -hmm. now. We've made lots of, you know, great decisions, I'm sure. And I think we've probably rushed into some decisions that mm -hmm. aren't, uh, aren't, aren't, haven't gone where we maybe thought yeah. they would go at the time we made them. Um, and I think catch a breath, review where you're at and 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 then go again. And I And, and with that, I think don't always get caught up just rushing towards the thing you think you should do because everybody else is doing mm -hmm. it. Be be really brave and, you know, our language positively provoke where you might get that next bit of growth from, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and if I'm allowed another one. Of course. I would yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> you have as many as you like. Many as you like. Catch, Go on. Catch a breath. Yeah. Huh. Uh, be brave. Um, and then look, remember that brands live in the real world. Consumers buy brands. They navigate categories by brands. Mm -hmm. They're they're naturally public. Mm -hmm. um, and by being big and public, you naturally gain more trust. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a proven fact. So I think um, definitely reassess whether you are being too recessive from right. a brand advertising point of view. Okay. That's great. Kelly. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. superb. That is absolutely brilliant. And that's a lot of food for thought for people. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming along. Kelly, thank you so much for chatting with us today. It was a pleasure as always. If there's anything else you would like to ask us or hear more about, search JC Deco Digital Change Makers online. We hope you enjoyed listening. And wherever you get your podcasts, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.